Welcome back to the Buds in the Box podcast. Now, before we get into the question of the day, we have a huge announcement for you guys. So we are actually going to be giving away a Toronto Maple Leafs regular jersey or reverse retro jersey for free. So all you have to do to enter is like, be subscribed to our channel, and comment down below if you would like a regular jersey or a reverse retro jersey, and then who you want on the back of that jersey completely free. So we're really excited about that. And it's uh, free to enter, as I said. So make sure you guys enter. Good luck to everyone. Yep. And just to clarify awesome. that, we're not just giving away free jerseys. Um, you have to enter, and it's a giveaway. Yeah. So only one person is actually getting a jersey. Just yeah. That. Sorry, sorry if I didn't say that well enough. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry. Yeah. Now let's get into the question of the day. Will or can Austin Matthews win the Hart Trophy? Which one of you guys want to go first? I'll Philly. Okay, I'll go, go first. Yeah, um, I mean, I would love to see it, obviously. I mean, Matthews is definitely my favorite player in the NHL. Uh, he's my favorite player on the Leafs. I love watching him. Um, on a personal level, yeah, I want him to win it. Realistically, I think McDavid would have to get injured, um, fall off the face of the earth, or <laughs> just, like, stop playing hockey. Um, but I don't think that's really going to happen. Injured, he could get injured, but... You don't really know. Um, I think if if you take McDavid out of the equation, I think he's definitely the runner-up. But if uh, if we're saying who's winning the heart, it's going to be Connor McDavid, if you ask me. Jude? Yeah, for sure. I, I, I think it's definitely Connor McDavid. He's having an, an incredible season. He hit that 50 marker already, obviously. And, uh, and, and no doubt, um, I'm hoping, uh, praying, and I think we all are about the Rocket Richard, right? Um, but that's not really the question. So um, he's, he's obviously dominating that right now, but um, I don't know, even, even he, he's not that, he's not even that runner up, right. For under McDavid. So I, I don't know. I, I think it, it'd be dry saddle next. Just, well, if McDavid did get injured, then you never know. Um, Cause then there goes dry saddle um, too. But, uh, but yeah, Felix said it best. Um, I think it would be very hard. We need something to happen to McDavid. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with both of you. Something would happen have to happen. Now, either whether this be Mc, uh, Matthew just av- elevating his game to the next level and, you know, getting to that close to that goal per game mark, I think that could secure him the Hart Trophy because, you know, that hasn't been done in a while. Like Stamco scored 60 um, a bunch of years ago, but that's really it. Uh, we haven't seen anything like it. So if Matthews can do that, you know, he played five less games. We have to take that into perspective as well. So um, that, so either that has to happen or Connor McDavid, again, like Feli said, just has to fall off the face of the earth. Yeah, and I mean, that was a good point too. I think people are forgetting, okay, the Leafs have played 29 games now, but Matthews has only played uh, 24. He played like 26, something like that. Okay, anyways. He's, so he's got 21 goals and not many more games. So you got to look at that Two goals per game, points per game, stuff like that. Yeah. One, like one or two hat tricks could just put him right back up there at, at a goal. Game, yeah. So for some reason, Matthews doesn't get hat tricks though. Yeah. He's allergic. He's only had two career hat tricks and one in the every, he's, he's got a ton of two goal games, but no hat tricks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's, let's, uh, we'll wrap that question up and we'll move on into the game. Leafs versus Jets. I think this is like the fourth, third or fourth time they play within a small span of time. Um, Leafs lose 5-2. And I just want to address the, the elephant in the room. Um, I was looking at some Leafs fans and they basically said the refs blew the game for them. Now, I am a guy who I do not make excuses or I try not to if let's say my team loses or something like that. And I, I don't blame it on the refs. I try not to. Um, and in this case, I really wanted to, but I, I can't, right? Leafs are in a losing position. That call on Hyman in the third period should never, ever happen. That happens 50 times in the game. Two guys go in the puck battle. It sucks that the Winnipeg guy fell and the ref called that, but the Leafs shouldn't have been in that position losing down 3-2 in the first place so that's on them and the refs the only thing the refs did was blow their chance for a comeback right the other thing 
as we transition into the start of the game, puck drops a minute in. Dermot, I believe, bats the puck out of the air right to Kerfoot. Kerfoot slides it down to Engvall. Engvall snipes. Water bottle goes into the stands. And Winnipeg's like, wait a minute. That was a hand pass. No goal. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you guys your opinions, but I have my opinion. I told you guys this before we did the podcast. My opinion is set in stone. I feel like it's not a high stick. It's not an offside. It's an interchangeable rule. The rule changes and varies as you go into different spots of uh, different zones in the ice, right? You're allowed to hand pass in your own zone, right? The ref missed that call. They missed the hand pass. No doubt about it. It was a hand pass, but they missed it. And just like you can't re- like call back or challenge a penalty, a missed penalty, excuse me, you shouldn't be able to challenge a hand pass. It was a missed call. What, do you, what are your guys' thoughts? Yeah, exactly. I mean, if, if, like, if, um, if you can't go back and challenge a penalty, not saying that they are the same thing or whatever, but they're, like, basically interchangeable with this situation. If um, Dermot tripped someone at the blue line, the puck goes out to Engvall, he scores, but the trip wasn't called, would they have gone back and said that's no goal because he tripped them? No. So a hand pass, a missed call by the ref, that's like, um, you know, if he, if he took the puck and threw it or something, or like, you can't do that, right? You can't close your fingers around the puck. Let's say it was a different zone or whatever, and he did that. Um, would they have gone back and said, oh, that's a call that we missed, and now it's no goal? Like, um, another example, if, if there's an offside, um, like – in the in a play that was in the same shift so the whistle hasn't gone but they go all the way back and say oh there was an offside here during the shift so it's no goal right you wouldn't do that so i feel like for a hand pass like that it was a ref missed call and it should never have um like i guess a challenge is whatever that but it shouldn't have been called back i mean i i, I don't know have you guys have you seen that before like have you, has that happened I- before I, I honestly don't know, and I am not, like, before everyone goes and rips on me in the comments, I don't know if there's an actual rule, like, what you can challenge and not. There might be. There probably is. But I'm just saying that I know it didn't work in our favor, but it's a stupid rule. Well, that's the thing. If that's a rule, then you should be able to go back and call a penalty. If the Jets had scored in overtime um, a couple nights ago, then why not go back and say that was a penalty that he slashed Riley's stick in half? No goal. Yeah. Right? Same sort of thing. A missed call by the ref. Yeah. Like, why? Wh- what's stopping Winnipeg from challenging that penalty, giving themselves a penalty, but the goal gets called back? Yeah. Jude, any thoughts? Well, I Feli took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say the Winnipeg, uh, that, that exact play is a great example because – um, if, if we if, if we didn't score there in Stasny or whatever, someone scored on that play, uh, would we be having this conversation today? Or would it be it'd be in a totally different tone, I feel like. Uh, we'd be very angry because we couldn't go back and challenge that. And on top of that, um, I remember just Ray Ferraro, uh, Team Canada, when they challenged against Germany, I'm pretty sure, when we beat them 16 to 1 or whatever it was, we challenged a goal against them for an offside play. But they, they've been in the zone for about four minutes prior to scoring. And then they just went all the way back in time and said, you know what, that kind of looked offside, no goal. And, like, there's a whole different play developing, and it's it's just not really fair. Um, I don't know, Ray Ferraro seemed very upset about it, and I agree with Feli. And uh, and I think we all have, have that kind of same mindset with the with the going back. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's, it's not in present time. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, that's why a lot of people, um, you know, especially maybe older generations, but I'm definitely um, going with it, is like the video review is getting kind of crazy. It's like, you can't go back four minutes and say, oh, there was an offside there that the ref missed, so we're going to call that no goal. Or, you know, I think video review needs to be used for stuff. Definitely needs to be used, but like, like offsides when there's actually a play if there's a rush and it's offside and the ref misses it, fine. 
but if it's happening along like way back then it just shouldn't be like it just shouldn't be a factor in the in the goal that transpired right yeah. and also goals that barely cross the line and stuff like that right that's that's yes. where the view comes in clutch but yeah but then so yeah for stuff like missed calls that's a part of the game refs miss calls the ref missed the call when Riley's stick got slashed in half. You know, so be it. Whatever that happens, it's it's hockey, and I think that's like where I'm coming from, and I'm sure a lot of people are coming from is like maybe stop using video review for like the littlest things possible. Yeah. You know, like use it for a high stick or on a goal or like a, a puck going across the line or something like that. Just like nitpicking every little thing that a ref misses is like you're gonna have a brand new game at that point if you went back and changed every single thing about a game that the ref missed the yeah. score would be different there'd be way more penalties you know all that stuff right yeah yeah so basically we're saying like missed calls shouldn't be reviewable right but moving on the first goal of the game scored by mason appleton just a defensive zone breakdown for the Leafs uh, in transition. No one's covering their guy. Mace, uh, I believe it was. I don't even know who who shot it on net. It was like Adam Lowry, Lowry or something. Lowry? Okay, yeah. Adam Lowry puts it to the net and Mason Appleton. I mean, it took a weird down. Yeah, it, it was. Um, so yeah, they just... yeah he, he wasn't even trying to score that. <laughs> oh, yeah, he wasn't. Um, <laughs> just went in. Second period. That's really all that happened in the first um second period leafs giving uh life to the jets with sloppy play and turnovers now this was about i'd say eight minutes into the game as i was writing this um muzzin actually scored on the on the penalty kill uh shorthanded that was a good so shot it was it was a really good play i i was really um that was actually the first um shorthanded goal that the leafs scored this season yeah fun fact even though Mikheyev gets like 90 ch- shots yeah. on the penalty kill per game. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was a good play. Marner uh, turned the puck over. Uh, I think it was like a three-on-one. Pass it back to Muzzin. Muzzin snipes. And I wrote something down. Let me just try and read it back. Oh, yeah, it was just about the – after all their chances on the on shorthanded, they finally get a goal. Um, and then – as th- that goal sparked the Leafs, right? Pierre Engvall's goal would have sparked the Leafs, but this goal sparks the Leafs. And then Nylander scores a perfect 2-1-1. If, like, the defender took the pass away, gave Nylander all day to shoot. He read that perfectly, shot. Um, and, yeah, the Leafs started heating up and going back to their identity that they played the first half of this season with. And... Um, Unfortunately, that was short-lived with a great tip by Paul Snazny. Stasny, not Snazny. Um, nothing really Anderson could do there. I thought Anderson had a good game. There was nothing really he could have done in, on most of those goals. It was mostly defensive breakdowns. I, I, I want to hear your guys' opinion as well. I mean, yeah, most of the goals against were not his fault. Weird deflection. Oh, Feli. Uh, yeah. So Anderson, I feel like he, he, he got kind of unlucky during the game. Um, definitely some bad bounces. I mean, Appleton didn't even try to score that, and it just bounced off his skate and goes in. That's just pure luck, if you ask me. I guess he was in the right place at the right time, but still. Um, and that deflection was a double deflection on Stastny's goal. Nothing you can do on that as a goalie. It's just like that's way too hard. It's hard enough to stop an NHL shot as it is, but if it gets deflected twice, you got no chance really. Um, unless it gets deflected right at you. Um, and the rest of the goals really. Um, well, Shifley's goal five on three. Like, come on. I mean, that's. You know, whatever. Um, yeah. But I don't think he had a bad game by any means. I think he just um, – I think he was just not in the right place at the right time like he needed to be, I guess. But there's nothing you can ask more of him, really. Yeah. Uh, Jude, Jude, the goalie expert, what do you have to say about this? I just I just mean um, 
there there's just that one goal that was kind of the the GWG when you look at it in uh, retrospect. Adam Lowry with that wraparound ish goal, and it was just kind of a five hole trickler. That was another that was another really unlucky goal, though. Yeah. Like yeah. he he shouldn't have let that in, but the Jets like that's super lucky. <laughs> He, he didn't even – he lost the puck like three times in the yeah. middle of his wraparound, and yeah. somehow it ended up going in. Like, just that was just a – right? I feel like the Jets got every single bounce that game. Mm. That happens sometimes in a win, but, like, uh, it's just annoying when you see your team, like, just getting every unlucky bounce and the other team getting every single lucky bounce. I can't remember last time the Leafs got a really lucky bounce was, like, Matthews, like, spun around and it went off, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that goal? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it was against like Vancouver or something. He just like spun around and it went off like three guys or whatever. But like, yeah, I mean, we, like, we've just got outplayed today. Like they were outshot and that never happened. So yeah, something was definitely missing there. Well, I'd be interested to see what happens tomorrow. What moves sure. are made, what changes are, are made, all that type of yeah. stuff. Yeah, I think Campbell's coming back Maybe. Maybe. Uh, tomorrow, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll definitely we'll definitely need him for a spark, and uh, yeah, he's definitely a key part. To, to well, play. yeah, I mean, if you're a Leafs fan, you got to be looking at this situation like the Leafs just played two games against Vancouver and three games against the Jets, lost four in regulation, and won once in overtime. Yeah, that's super unacceptable you can't be a playoff team doing that like you can't go into you can go into losing streaks but losing four out of five games and only winning one in overtime which they easily could have lost too because their goalie was stealing the game I mean it just can't happen like that like any team is gonna drop in the standings it's a miracle that they're still in first honestly after dropping four games and only winning one in overtime, not even winning in regulation. Like, after coming off such a hot streak, too, against Edmonton, it's just so weird. Yeah, I that was one thing that I was actually concerned about. Like, I asked the question to myself, where is the team that was so defensively strong? They they literally didn't make a single defensive mistake against one of the best offenses in the league. And they looked like not a playoff team, but a Stanley Cup champion team. And then just like that, with a snap of the fingers, they play. They don't even look like a playoff team. They yeah. they don't. They look like they look like they're like on the playoff bubble of fifth and fourth in the North Division right now. Like they're gonna have trouble with Ottawa tomorrow if they play like that. And yeah, for sure. And I mean, like you just like you can't drop four games out of five. It just you can't. And um, I honestly can't remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> it's okay it's okay I had something super important to say and now i can't remember <laughs> well if it was important you would have remembered it fair enough yeah um and i think i guess that's really it we we kind of went over the third period goals already nothing really happened except for that kind of bullshit hymen call uh actually remember what i was gonna say sorry okay go ahead go ahead <laughs> <laughs> um no i was just gonna say why well, when you were talking about edmonton it came into my head and then it just kind of left my head but um the leafs played so well defensively because they knew that they had to play well defensively in order to win um, against McDavid and their um, highly offensive team. When you come back and you go, oh, my God, okay, I'm playing Vancouver now. You're like, oh, okay. Like the Leafs are like, okay, you know, they're not as well. They're not as good defensively or offensively. So let's lay off defense a little bit and try and go score goals and win the game like that. Um but I don't know. They like the way they played against Edmonton. If if they could play like that, like half the time, there would be no problem. Like oh, yeah. playing five games and playing two and a half like that, you will be completely fine. And you might get another win, like playing kind of bad. But like I don't know. Yeah, they they would be completely fine. Yeah. Um. Uh. But I did want to get you got both of your opinions on the Hyman penalty situation there just before we wrap things up so here we'll start with you this time all right um i don't know i didn't i didn't really catch all of it i just i just saw keith was barking his head off um so clearly 
if a, if a coach like him who's stayed fairly quiet for um for most of his time here right like I you don't see him going off like that um he's he's a pretty quiet guy so I knew something was wrong there um and for the interference uh I don't know about it and then I just saw the ref the ref couldn't take a few words from Keith so he had to throw Boyd in the box too so or whoever it was so I don't know and then that was just a freebie for Scheifele um I mean a two minute five on three <laughs> any team is going to score with a two minute five on three but yeah, I mean, that just shouldn't be called ever. Um, that's that, like at that point, if you're going to call, if you're going to go back and look at a hand pass, then that's a missed call. Maybe go back and look at a made call that shouldn't be called and reverse it at that point. If you're going to nitpick every single little call that's missed or made, then, you know, then maybe go and review it. If they're going to be nitpicky about every single little thing that happens um, and video review it, then do it for penalties too, because it's inconsistent if you're doing it for hand passes and high sticks and, and offsides, but not doing it for penalties. Yeah. And yeah. the worst part about that play, right? First of all, that play happens 50 times in a game, two guys going for the puck in a face-off. One guy falls over three Winnipeg jets fell over on that play. Not because of Hyman, because you're scr- you're trying to get the puck in a scramble and it just happens. Right. Hyman's body touched the other guy's body. That doesn't mean it's an interference. The worst part about this is you, as a referee, I am a referee. I was considering wearing my ref <laughs> stuff today to prove it. But would have been funny. You never give that call to the team that is losing with an empty net. Never. No. Like it's such a soft call, and the team is losing. Maybe, <laughs> maybe if the Jets were up five to five to two, you give it to the Jets. Right, I could have easily down, given down. that to the Jets, but no, yeah. not never to the losing team. I mean, no, it's just such a weak call. And to go back to that point, it's like if you're gonna um, if you're gonna call everything and video review it, what is different about a penalty? Yeah, yeah. What's different? You can go and review a hand pass or an offside or a high stick or whatever, and you can you can review. Um, you know, stuff like that, but going back and looking at, oh, a missed, uh, or not missed calls necessarily, because you could go back and just get a ton of missed calls, but if they're trusting the ref's eye for penalties, because they won't review a penalty, they're like, it's the ref's discretion to call a penalty. Yeah. But it's not the ref's discretion to call a hand pass. Yeah. So if they trust the ref so much with calling penalties, why don't they trust them with calling hand passes, right? Yeah, yeah no. and that's hand passes are so, such an obvious thing too. Yeah, exactly. And this is a exactly great, like, this is an amazing point because it, it goes both ways, right? So yeah, so then if you don't trust the refs to call a hand pass, then don't trust them to call a penalty. And if they call a bad penalty, go back and review it. Yeah. And the games are going to get longer and they're going to get more boring. But if you're going to review everything, review everything, not just the things you want to review. Yeah, and and, and and hey, I'm like I'm getting kind of mad because it was against the Leafs. Yeah, I but if it was the other way around, trust me, I would be saying the same thing, just not in this tone. Um, because yeah, yeah I, like you can't you can't go back and you can't. It's got to go both ways. Yeah, I I'd say I'd say with us, we're not like the typical biased Leafs fan that just says trade Freddie, do this. We are an NHL and hockey fan first, so we care about more that the game is like, I, I guess you would say we care more about the game is right and stuff. Obviously we want the Leafs to win, but we also care about everything else that goes into the game that we love and watch every day. So. Yeah. yeah I mean, obviously the Leafs are our favorite team. We're going to cheer for them. We're diehard fans. Like I know I am. I know Judas. I know Eric is. We go to make Leafs square every year when it's not COVID and, and we watch the playoff games. We cheer with the Leafs fans. We, you know, we are, Die hard Leafs fans. You know, when you see us go to a game, we're not sitting on the glass. We're sitting up in the rafters with with everyone, all the die hard fans. But fans. sorry? With, I, I was agreeing with you with the die hard Leaf fans. Up yeah, there. exactly. Not with the die hard Leaf fans. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got to look at it from different perspectives, too. Obviously, I'm going to be biased towards the Leafs because I'm a huge Leafs fan. But you have to be, if, if that call was made against, um, Winnipeg, the hand pass, 
and they scored and got called back. I probably wouldn't be as passionate about it, but I would be saying that that shouldn't have been called. Yeah, you know? and and honestly, I can say like we're we're probably gonna go watch um uh Nolan the Nolan Hockey Podcast after this. And I, I want to see what he you, says. Zach, I've watched a lot of Zach's <laughs> videos. He's he's pretty fair with stuff, like especially when it comes to like he he knew that we should have won last game. He he said it, and and you know I respect that about him. He, I guarantee you, he will say that was not an interference. Exactly. As a it. Jets fan, as a Jets fan, you would say, I'm going to take that all day. All day. Because it's a call in my favor. Our team's getting kind of lucky today. Whatever. It's a, a win's a win, right? Um, a power play is a power play, no matter what. Um, but he'll probably be like, you know, um, that, that's kind of that's kind of a bad call, but I'll take it, you yeah. know? So, if it was for the Leafs, we'd probably be saying the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, we'll end it there before – I mean, we could literally talk about this all day. Like, we could. But um, for time's sake, we'll end it here. So, make sure you guys enter the contest below. Win a free Leafs jersey. All so, you have to do is like, subscribe, and comment. Did you have anything you wanted to say? Uh, I was just going to add, yeah, comment. Um your you know favorite player on the Leafs um, because we're doing Leafs jerseys only right there. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted, I if guess, you wanted I guess, else. I mean, I guess you know what, like, um, we if could do Leafs, any jersey. Yeah, any jersey really. If it just comment the player, we'll get it for you if you are lucky enough to be the winner. So, good luck to everyone. We hope you guys win, or well, one of you will. So, good luck to you, everyone. And thank you for listening or watching the Buds in the Box podcast. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.